1978, Christopher Reeve's Superman the movie showed the world that superheroes didn't have to be campy or goofy. They could actually be taken seriously by audiences if enough care and attention were put into them. X-Men in 2000 and Spider-Man in 2002 proved that they could be box office smashes. The popularity and success of these films really took off in the late 2000s with epics like The Dark Knight and Iron Man. For as many comic book movie successes that we've seen, there have also been plenty of failures. In this episode of Comic Book Cinema, I will be listing the top 10 lowest grossing superhero films based on Marvel or DC Comics. No super ex-girlfriends here. I love animated superhero features, but today we are only focusing on live action. This will also not be adjusted for inflation. So the best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway. Welcome to the most must-see comic book movie content on the interwebs, delivered to you by every woman's fantasy. Jonathan May. This is Comic Book Cinema. To kick things off, we have two dishonorable mentions, and they both happen to be from the DCEU. Kicking us off is Shazam! Fury of the Gods with a box office of $134 million and a budget of $125 million. And you may be thinking to yourself, oh, well, it still made $10 million. That's not true. All of these films' budgets do not factor in marketing, which sometimes can go upwards to 50 or even a hundred or more million dollars. Hot take, I actually like this film better than the first Shazam, which certainly didn't set the box office on fire either. James Gunn announcing that the new DCU was on its way with four remaining old DCEU films certainly didn't help this film's box office performance. Speaking of the old DCEU films, it's gonna be everybody's favorite, Blue Beetle. With a box office of 130 million versus a budget of 125, this movie didn't make any money. James Gunn is a genius. I just wanna throw that out there. Every film he has given us comic book movie fans, I have loved. Rebooting the old DCEU was a brilliant plan because that was very obviously a sinking ship. God almighty. Making the decision to keep certain actors and actresses from the old DCEU in the same roles? Very bad idea. Exhibit A, Blue Beetle. This film was a massive box office flop and we're keeping this version of Jaime Reyes in the new DCU? Not a great plan. And kicking off our list at number 10, it's gonna be the newly released Madam Web. With a box office return of only 96 million and a budget that's estimated to be over 100 million somewhere in that ballpark, Madam Web released in theaters on Valentine's Day 2024. At this point, Sony's reputation was already in the gutter due to their recent box office flop, Morbius. But this film somehow managed to outdo it. Currently sitting at 12% on Rotten Tomatoes as of the recording of this video, I can assure you it deserves a lower ranking. I've been watching Marvel films in theaters since 2000's X-Men, and this movie going experience was by far my worst. At number nine, it's gonna be 2004's Catwoman with a box office of $82.1 million and a budget of $100 million. Every time I made a worse comic book movie list, I would get so many suggestions that Catwoman had to be on the list. I recently watched this godforsaken film to see if it was really as bad as people say it was worse. Halle Berry is an attractive woman and has given film fans some unforgettable performances. But she's also given comic book movie fans two of the worst comic book character portrayals of all time. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. At number eight, it's gonna be 1994's The Shadow. This film had a box office of only $48 million with a budget that was also modest at 40 million, but the film still didn't make any money. I watched this film as a child and I can also remember being introduced by my grandparents to the old radio show from the 1930s via cassette tapes. If you're younger than 30, I have probably lost you at this point. Let me reel it back in. Creating a major motion picture based off of a 1930s radio show might or might not have been a good idea. 
but the execution didn't get them the box office results they had hoped for. At number seven, it's gonna be The Spirit, which came out in 2008. It had a box office of 39 million with a budget of 60 million. Initially created as a Sunday supplement for the newspaper in the 1940s, DC Comics acquired the license for this character for roughly a decade until 2015, which is why this 2008 disaster made it onto this list. Even with this film's cast of A-listers, it still couldn't make a profit for director Frank Miller. At number six, it's gonna be 1986's Howard the Duck, with a box office of 38 million versus a budget of 36 million. Arguably the first major kink in the pioneer, George Lucas's armor. The same director that revolutionized movie special effects with the original Star Wars films could not deliver with a wacky character like Howard the Duck on the big screen. Centering a modern day MCU film around Howard would be considered very ambitious. But back in 1986, it was crazy. Now you wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. At number five, it's gonna be Superman IV, The Quest for Peace, which came out in 1987. This film had a box office of 36.7 million and a budget of only 17 million. As someone who grew up watching this film a lot, and even still to this day considers it a guilty pleasure, it pains me to include this on the list. But facts are facts. It is worth noting that out of all the movies on this list, this one not only made a profit, but has the largest profit margin. It also has Nuclear Man, played by Mark Pillow, who is the nicest guy you'll ever meet. This film is by no means an Oscar contender, but if you're into cheesy, over-the-top 80s films, then you might just have a good time with it. At number four, it's gonna be 1996's The Phantom, with a box office of 23.5 million and a budget of 42 million. Another film that emerged from a character that started in the newspaper in the 1930s and would eventually have stories in the comics published by both Marvel and DC. Kit Walker, AKA the skin tight, purple suit wearing Phantom's major motion picture debut did not go very well. At number three, the film that came out in 1984, Supergirl, with a box office of only 14.3 million and a budget of 35 million. A lot of negative things have been said about this film over the years. A lot, if not all of those things, are probably warranted, but one cannot deny that Helen Slater was an excellent Supergirl. She definitely looked the part, even if the special effects in this movie couldn't quite match the magic that was given to us in the Christopher Reeves films. At number two, another film from 2008, it's gonna be Punisher Warzone. This movie had a box office of only $10.1 million versus a budget of 35 million. 2008 wasn't as kind to superhero films as we all remember. Ray Stevenson is no doubt an icon and a great actor, but this movie's awful writing and ridiculous fight scenes were too much for any actor to overcome and also marked the end of an era for Marvel films outside of the MCU that weren't owned by Sony or Fox. And at number one, it's gonna be the film that came out in 1997, Steel. That's enough, my ass is on fire! Thought I'd smell some nuts roasty. With a box office of only 1.7 million, I think my daughter could make more at the lemonade stand than this. And a budget of 16 million? This film was a disaster. Steel released August 15th in 1997, making only 870,000 on its opening weekend. With a second weekend decline of 78%, it achieved the record for having the biggest second weekend drop off for any superhero film until recently being tied by The Marvels. Good job, Brie Larson. Currently sitting at 12% on Rotten Tomatoes, which Madam Web is there as well right now, this film had the best intentions going in, but even that combined with Shaquille O'Neal rapping on the soundtrack couldn't save it from a swift box office death. If you want to see John Henry Irons done better, check out the Superman and Lois TV show. Well, that does it for this episode of Comic Book Cinema's Countdown. Were you shocked at some of the films that were on this list? Which films from this list do you actually like? I know I have a few. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, have a good one.